today we are going to the beach. Actually, no we're not. Today we're going to give Ansel a bath at home. Because of the mandatory shelter in place rule, Ansel hasn't been able to go to the beach in a couple of days, and that's usually when he gets a bath. The importance of regularly bathing your dog goes way beyond just having a dog who smells nice. It is also really important for their overall health and well-being. As a disclaimer to this video, I am not a dog health expert, so if you have any questions or concerns about bathing your dog, you should consult with your veterinarian or your dog's regular groomer. Every time I'm going to wash my dog, a few hours before I give him a bath, I clean out my bathtub and I scrub down the sides of the tub, as well as the shower walls. The reason I do this is because as soon as my dog gets in the bathtub, he starts trying to lick everything, and I don't want him licking human shampoo or human soap. So this is also the same reason for why I take out the human shampoo and human soap before I put him in the bathtub. Depending on your dog's size and temperament, it can be helpful to wear shoes or some kind of protective footwear while you are giving your dog a bath. When my dog comes out of the bath, he is so excited to be done that he will trample my feet if I am not wearing shoes. I also highly recommend taking off any hand jewelry or dangly earrings that might get caught in your dog's fur. After you have prepared your bathroom space, it is helpful to gather everything you will need for your dog's bath, including dog shampoo and conditioner and towels. I also like to use a mixing bowl because I do not have a retractable shower head. For my dog's shampoo and conditioner, I like to use a 2-in-1 combo because it shortens the amount of time that my dog has to be in the shower. If your dog has any skin allergies or skin conditions, you should make sure that the shampoo you have selected is appropriate for his or her skin type. While you are bathing your dog, it is very important that you don't get water in your dog's ears because it could lead to infection. You should also avoid getting shampoo or conditioner in your dog's eyes. As soon as I am done bathing my dog, I like to let him drip in the shower for about a minute because that means there will be less water all over my bathroom floor. I found that by giving his paws, ears, and tail a gentle squeeze, I can wring out some of the water in his fur. Before giving my dog a bath, I gather as many towels as I can find because drying him requires the use of many towels. As soon as he gets out of the bathtub, he starts shaking everywhere, so I like to have a few towels on the floor to keep the area from becoming too wet and slippery. Sometimes I try to make the experience more enjoyable for him by playing a game called Catch the Towel. Between the hairdryer and the shower, I can't tell which one my dog hates the most. Because Ansel is a poodle and he doesn't shed, it is very important to brush him regularly so he doesn't get matted. Preventing mats in your dog's fur is very important because if the fur gets matted then the skin underneath can become very inflamed and infected. To make my dog extra fluffy, I like to brush him and blow dry him at the same time. My dog doesn't like getting brushed but I've found that he most tolerates a kid's hairbrush with short plastic bristles. If your dog is giving you a really hard time while brushing, I recommend experimenting with different hair brushes and combs. While you are blow drying your dog, it also helps to have a small area such as the bathroom, where your dog can walk around without feeling restrained. By letting my dog roam free in the bathroom, I am able to dry him from several angles as he continues to walk around. My dog enjoys being blow dried in some areas more than other areas, so I can use the hair dryer to guide him around the bathroom. Ansel doesn't mind having his back or his chest blow dried and brushed, but he does get really flustered if I try to blow dry his face. So that's why I ended up letting most of his face and ears air dry. Depending on your comfort and experience level with your dog, it may also be a good idea to use bath days as an opportunity for nail trims and sanitary trims and for brushing their teeth. Because Ansel has mixed feelings about his bath time, 
I found that it's very important to combine the experience with something that he enjoys, so at the end of his bath time, I make sure to give him a dental chew and playtime with his favorite toy. If you like this video or if you found it helpful, please be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you've recently made a video of your dog's bath time, feel free to drop a link below in the comments section. I know for some of you this may have been the first time trying to give your dog a bath at home, so just remember that we're all in this together. Are you the fluffiest wolf ever? Did you have a good bath time? Are you smelling like the best wolf ever? Do you smell like a good boy? Clean poodle! Is that you? Are you the clean poodle? Are you the clean poodle we've been looking for?